Welcome to AI World TV, your go-to destination for everything artificial intelligence. Discover the captivating landscape of AI, where advanced technology finds real-life application. Subscribe to AI World TV for webzine articles, reports, podcasts, videos, live events, and latest trends. Hear from top industry leaders and discover how AI is transforming industries and our daily lives. Welcome to our uh, deep dive into the world of AI. Yeah. You know, guided by this book, Genesis, Artificial Intelligence, Hope, and the Human Spirit. Yeah. And, you know, imagine... Oh, wow. ...having, like, a former Google CEO, yeah. a top Microsoft tech mind, and Henry Kissinger, like, all in one room, no. tackling AI's, like, biggest questions. Yeah. That's what we're unpacking today. Yeah. And this book isn't just about the tech, you yeah. know? It gets into, like, global power shifts. Mm -hmm. And even what makes us human in, like, an AI age. Yeah. Ready to have your mind blown. I think so. Let's dive in. Um, what I find fascinating about this book is this optimistic, like, take on AI's potential for scientific discovery. It's not just hype, you know? They lay out how AI could analyze massive data sets at speeds we can't even fathom, Deliver. leading to breakthroughs in medicine energy, things we might never achieve on our own. It's like having a research assistant that never sleeps. Right, right. Exactly. They specifically talk about AI analyzing genetic data to personalize cancer treatments, leading to much higher survival rates. Yeah. Powerful stuff. Absolutely. But the authors are also careful to remind us that AI is a tool. It's up to us to ensure these discoveries benefit all of humanity, not just a select few. So it's not just about the what of AI's capabilities, wow. but the how of its application. And speaking of applications, the book dives into how AI is changing the game on the global chessboard right. Yes, the geopolitical implications are huge. Think of AI as a new kind of power source. Countries are in a race to become AI leaders, investing heavily in research and development. It almost feels like a new Cold War, but instead of nuclear weapons, it's algorithms and processing power. The book mentions that China is heavily investing in facial recognition technology powered by AI. It could give them a real edge in surveillance and social control. That's a great example, and it highlights the author's concerns about AI intensifying existing inequalities between nations. Imagine a world where only a handful of countries control advanced AI, giving them dominance in everything from economics to military strategy. That's a sobering thought. Makes me think about the need for international collaboration. To ensure AI is developed responsibly right. Okay. Like maybe we need a global AI treaty or something. The authors absolutely call for that. They advocate for international collaboration to establish AI governance frameworks, a global set of rules to prevent AI from becoming a weapon of mass disruption. Makes sense. We wouldn't want rogue AI systems making their own decisions right. Right. But let's shift gears for a second. The book also delves into some really deep questions about what AI means for humanity on a more philosophical level. It gets into the whole question of what makes us human when machines are becoming incredibly intelligent. Absolutely. The authors, particularly Kissinger, really wrestle with this. What defines our humanity when machines can potentially reason learn and even create in ways that rival or even surpass our own abilities? It's a mind-bending question. The book talks about AI's potential impact on art and creativity. Imagine AI systems composing symphonies or painting masterpieces. Would we still value human creativity in the same way? Would it change our understanding of what it means to be an artist? That's a great example of how AI forces us to re-examine our assumptions about ourselves. The book delves into the concept of consciousness. Can machines become truly conscious? And if so, what rights and responsibilities might we owe them? Whoa, that's getting pretty deep. Mm. It's like AI is making us look in the mirror and ask, what makes us unique? What separates us from machines? Precisely. And the book doesn't offer easy answers. It encourages us to grapple with these complex questions, to engage in a deep and thoughtful dialogue about the future we want to create in this age of AI. I'm already feeling like I need to take a break and process all of this, but we're just getting started. In the next part of our deep dive, we'll explore the book's framework for navigating this uncharted territory of AI, including their recommendations for proactive regulation, ethical design, and global cooperation. Stay tuned. Welcome back. Before we took a moment to reflect, we were discussing the call to action in Genesis for a human-centered approach to AI. And um, I'm ready to unpack their specific recommendations when you are. Totally. I'm really curious to hear how the authors suggest we navigate this new world. They offer some concrete steps for steering AI in the right direction right. You got it. They break it down into three main areas. Proactive regulation, ethical design, 
and global cooperation. Let's start with regulation, which might sound a little dry, but it's crucial here. Yeah, regulation often gets a bad rap, especially in the fast-paced world of tech. But I get why the authors see it as essential, especially with something as powerful as AI. It's not about stifling innovation. It's about making sure AI develops in a way that benefits everyone right. Exactly. The authors argue that waiting for problems to pop up before we act is just too risky with AI. Think of it like building a skyscraper. You don't wait until it's halfway built to start worrying about safety codes and structural integrity. That's a great analogy. So what kinds of regulations do they have in mind? They highlight the need for regulations around data privacy, algorithmic transparency, and accountability for AI-driven decisions. They also emphasize addressing potential biases in AI systems, which could make- You are listening to the AI World Podcast, your trusted source for the latest innovations, insights, and trends in artificial intelligence, blockchain, fintech, and decentralized technologies. Each episode features expert interviews, engaging discussions, and in-depth analysis of how AI transforms industries worldwide. Stay ahead of the curve with the latest articles and exclusive reports from the AI World Journal, covering everything from emerging technologies to industry breakthroughs. For more news, global events, and access to AI World Society circle gatherings, visit us at AIWorld.tv. Don't forget to subscribe to stay informed, stay connected, and be part of the AI revolution with AI World Lounge. Thank you for listening. Make existing inequalities even worse. Makes sense. Like if an AI system used for loan approvals is biased against certain groups, that could have huge consequences. Exactly. But regulations alone aren't enough. The book also talks a lot about the importance of ethical AI design. It's about building ethical considerations into the very foundation of these systems. So it's not just about setting external rules. It's about building ethics into the AI's DNA, so to speak. How do you actually do that? It's not like you could just add a line of code that says, be good. It's more about designing systems that are aligned with human values. For example, building AI that prioritizes transparency so we can understand how it's making decisions or ensuring that AI systems are accountable, meaning we can trace decisions back to their source and address any negative outcomes. So it's about making sure the AI is explainable, that we can understand its reasoning. That makes me think about the black box problem we often hear about with AI where even the developers don't fully understand how the algorithms are arriving at certain conclusions. You're spot on. That's a big part of what the authors are trying to address. They want to move away from that black box approach and create AI systems that are more open and understandable. That makes a lot of sense. Okay, so we've got regulation and ethical design. What's the third piece of their framework? Global cooperation. AI is a global phenomenon. A breakthrough in one country can have ripple effects worldwide. So some authors argue that we need to address the challenges of AI together, not in isolation. It's like we need a global AI task force, kind of like the United Nations, but focus specifically on AI. Imagine world leaders coming together to hammer out agreements on ethical AI development, data sharing, and even figuring out how to resolve AI-related conflicts. Exactly. They advocate for international agreements to prevent a future where only a few countries benefit from AI, while everyone else faces the risks. Okay, so we've got the three pillars. Regulation, ethical design, mm -hmm. and global cooperation. But how do we put these ideas into practice? It feels pretty big picture so far. That's where the authors get into specifics. They offer recommendations tailored to different groups. For policymakers, they call for the creation of new institutions focused specifically on AI governance and updating existing laws to address the unique challenges of AI. So it's about modernizing our legal and political systems for the AI age. Makes sense. Yeah. What about the folks who are actually building AI, the technologists? What do the authors suggest for them? They emphasize the importance of ethical AI training and education basically embedding ethical principles into the culture of the tech industry. They also call for greater transparency in AI development, allowing for public scrutiny and input. So it's not just about writing clever code. It's about thinking through the potential consequences of that code. Yeah. What about business leaders? They play a big role in how AI is actually used right. Absolutely. The authors urge business leaders to adopt ethical AI principles in their own operations. They encourage them to invest in AI education for their workforce, ensuring that their employees are prepared for an AI-driven future. It's about responsible leadership in a world where AI is becoming increasingly integrated into every aspect of business. This is a lot to consider. I'm glad the book is pushing us to have these conversations. I agree.
And the authors don't let individuals off the hook either. They argue that we all have a responsibility to educate ourselves about AI and to advocate for its ethical development and use. It's like they're saying that the future of AI isn't something that's just happening to us. It's something we're all actively shaping. Exactly. It's about recognizing that technology is a tool. And like any tool, it can be used for good or for ill. Ultimately, it's up to us to use AI in a way that makes the world a better place. I love that. It's empowering to remember that we have a voice in this, that we can help steer AI in a positive direction. Now, before we wrap up this part of our deep dive, I'm curious to get your take on something. Out of all these recommendations, what stands out to you as the most important? For me, it's the emphasis on global cooperation. We're facing global challenges, and AI has the potential to either exacerbate those challenges or help us solve them. But we need to work together to make sure it's the latter. I agree. And that actually leads us perfectly into our final segment, where we'll explore the book's thoughts on AI's impact on truth and knowledge in the age of misinformation. Get ready. This is where things get really interesting. Welcome back for the final part of our deep dive into Genesis. We've talked about AI's potential to revolutionize everything from scientific discovery to global power dynamics. But now we're getting into the really mind-bending stuff. AI's impact on truth and knowledge. In a world of fake news and deep fakes, this feels especially relevant, wouldn't you say? Incredibly relevant. Um, this is where the book really challenges us to think critically about the information we consume. The authors express concern about AI blurring the lines between what's real and what's fabricated, which could have serious implications for how we understand the world around us. It's like AI is creating this hall of mirrors where it's getting harder and harder to tell what's a reflection of reality and what's a distortion. We've already seen how AI generated beat fakes can create incredibly realistic, but entirely fake videos. Just imagine if that technology becomes even more sophisticated and falls into the wrong hands. It's a sobering thought. And the book doesn't sugarcoat the potential dangers. Think about the implications for our political systems. What happens if people can't tell the difference between a genuine video of a political candidate and a deep fake designed to spread misinformation? It could undermine trust in our institutions and make it even harder to have productive conversations about important issues. It's almost like AI is weaponizing information itself. And it's not just about malicious actors intentionally spreading disinformation. The book also talks about AI algorithms unintentionally amplifying biases and creating filter bubbles, which can make us even more divided as a society. You're right. Think about how social media algorithms already personalize our feeds, showing us content that aligns with our existing beliefs. Now imagine AI taking that personalization to the next level, creating these echo chambers where we're only exposed to information that reinforces our existing worldview. It could make it even harder to bridge divides and find common ground. So it's not just about fake news. It's about AI potentially shaping our very perceptions of reality, steering us towards information that confirms our biases rather than challenging them. It feels like we're at a crossroads. How do we navigate this new information landscape? Do we need to develop some kind of AI lie detector to sift through all the noise? The book offers a more nuanced solution, thankfully. It calls for a multi-pronged approach that involves technological advancements, educational initiatives, and broader societal shifts. It's not about one magic bullet but about addressing the problem from multiple angles. Okay, let's unpack that. What are some of the technological solutions they propose? One key idea is developing AI systems that prioritize transparency and explainability. If we can understand how AI algorithms are making decisions, it's easier to spot and correct potential biases. It's like lifting the hood on the AI engine so we can see how it works, mm. rather than just trusting that it's taking us to the right destination. I like that analogy. But even if we can understand how AI works, mm -hmm. how do we stop people from intentionally using it to create and spread misinformation? That's where the book suggests developing AI systems mm -hmm. that can detect and flag AI-generated content. Think of it like an AI-powered fact checker that can help us identify deep fakes or other forms of fabricated content. It's a bit like an arms race using AI to combat the potential downsides of AI. It feels a little like fighting fire with fire. Yeah. But I can see how it might be necessary. But technology alone isn't enough, right? Right. The book also talks about the importance of education and media literacy. Absolutely. It's about empowering individuals to become savvy consumers of information. We need to teach people how to critically evaluate sources, recognize biases, and differentiate between credible information and fabricated content. It's about equipping them with the tools to navigate this increasingly complex information ecosystem. 
So it's not just about building better technology. It's about cultivating a more discerning public right. Yeah. People who are less likely to fall prey to manipulation. Yeah. Or blindly accept what they see online. Exactly. And the final piece of the puzzle, according to the book, is fostering broader societal change. They argue that we need to rebuild trust in institutions' expertise and shared sources of truth. It's about strengthening the foundations of our democracy and creating a more resilient, truth-seeking society. That's a tall order in today's world, where trust in institutions is already eroding. It feels like you're facing a crisis of truth on multiple fronts. Yeah, it's definitely a challenge, but the authors believe it's essential if we want to navigate the AI age successfully. They suggest promoting greater transparency and accountability in government and media. They also talk about the need to bridge divides and encourage productive dialogue across ideological differences. It's about finding ways to rebuild trust and find common ground even in a world that feels increasingly fractured. So it's about creating a more resilient information ecosystem, one that's less susceptible to manipulation and more focused on seeking truth. It's a big task, but I think it's a worthwhile one. I agree. This book isn't just a warning about the potential dangers of AI. It's a call to action. It's a reminder that we have a role to play in shaping the future of AI and ensuring that it serves humanity's best interests. Well said. As we reach the end of our deep dive into Genesis, I'm feeling a mix of emotions, excitement about AI's potential, concern about the risks, and a renewed sense of responsibility to engage in these crucial conversations. It's clear that AI is changing our world in profound ways, and it's up to all of us to ensure that those changes are for the better. I couldn't have said it better myself. It's been a fascinating exploration. And I hope this deep dive has given you the insights and inspiration you need to navigate the exciting and sometimes daunting world of artificial intelligence. And on that note, we've come to the surface of our deep dive into Genesis, artificial intelligence, hope, and the human spirit. We've covered a lot of ground today, from the potential benefits of AI to the ethical challenges it presents. But the conversation doesn't end here. What are your takeaways from this book? What questions has it raised for you? And most importantly, what role do you want to play in shaping the future of AI? Keep thinking, keep questioning, and keep exploring. Until next time, happy diving.